I hope another preview coming thick and fast because we've got a great little game. So here's a preview. We've got Accrington Stanley coming up on Wednesday night. Just been looking at Accrington Stanley again tonight because I don't know much about him. I remember the first game we did right well, scored three goals and then second half we were shit in a sense because they were chucking bloody kitchen sink at it and they didn't seem to have a player under bloody six foot seven. Um, John Coleman there, manager, old school lower league player and, and manager and that but I've been looking at his stats two spells at Accrington Stanley nearly 21 years he's done for that club he's about 20 games short and a thousand matches just at Accrington Stanley I tell you what that's that's some going I think you've got to I think you've got to hold your hands up there and so that's that's dedication to a team that isn't it and Accrington Stanley too I'm surprised some uh, some other clubs ain't come calling because his record's not bad with budgets he looks like he's always had. Anyway, we'll have a look at their team. Okay, this is the team that Stanley's more or less likely to put out. It's a 4-3-3. Clark, Sykes, Nottingham and Amanqua across the back. I had to get that one right, didn't I? Bloody hell. Lee, Butcher and Hamilton across midfield and up front. Adedoyin, Bishop and McConville. Talk about a couple of players there now. Basically, I want to talk about the wide left player McConville. He is their player to watch. So it's Sean McConville. I want to say McConville. I don't know why, but anyway, Sean McConville. Attacker. Attacker. That frustrates me, but I've got attacker. 32 years old, right footed uh, player. He will probably play on the left of the, the front three and be looking at cutting inside and getting some goals, so we'll have to be aware of that. Decent stats, 32 appearances this season. He has got just the two goals, but he's got 12 assists. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and here's the really impressive bit. Chances created, 88. 88 chances. You know, OK, they're probably not putting them all away, otherwise it'd be a bit hard in the table. But this is a good season for Stanley, and he's an, an important part of that. And, and just to show the... Uh, a comparison, you know, because it, we've got to get out of this habit of, oh, it's little Accrington Stanley. We've got to get out of that habit because wage budgets and anything else, that, that don't make a blind bit of difference when you're out there on pitch. So some of you will never have heard of this lad, but I'm just going to do a, a quick comparison here. So we'll look at his stats compared to one of our best creative players, Barry Bannon. So here we go. Sean McConville and Barry Bannon. Right. Appearances. Only the one difference there. 32 for McConville, 33 for Bannon. Goals. McConville's got just the two, Bannon's got four. It's one of his better seasons in recent years. Assists. 12 assists for McConville, six for Bannon. And then again, we'll look at that one we've just looked at. Chances created, 88 for McConville. Chances created for Bannon, 70. Now listen, this isn't me digging Skipper out by any means. What I'm trying to do is highlight the fact we've got to get out of this mentality of thinking well, we've got to batter them because I don't know any of their players. It don't mean anything. 11 against 11 on Park, they're going to have some good players, some useful players, and we've got to be aware of that. Another player they've got that we actually have heard of, though, is uh, Adedoyin. And this season, they were talking about him making first team squad. He was in and around in pre season, although we did only have seven players at some spells of that. He's gone there on a permanent a permanent move, a chance to get some first team football. Um, and we know what it's like. It's the rule of the ex, the lord of the ex player. If anybody's going to nick one, it's probably be him, so I'll have to keep an eye on him. Um, I don't actually know how he's going on down there. I think he's just had a couple of starts so far. I think he's had three starts, but they've won two of them. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on him although I've got to say he didn't look right happy having the left hills but when he came here he looked delighted didn't he he's gone down there and well 
here he was at Wednesday look happy as laddie and uh, here he was at his unveiling there at Stanley Park and uh, oh, look at that bit of a oh god what am I doing here and then recently look you know he's developed that, that thousand yard stare oh dear bless him and Joe, if he's on a bit of a downer about where his career is going and, and dropping down to what he probably thinks is a smaller club, if there's one thing that might reignite him, it's the chance of scoring against a club that's just let him go. That inspires all players, so he's going to be another one to watch out for. So you've got that Bishop down the middle, McConville on one side, and we know from what we've looked at, he's a dangerous player, and Adedoin, the threat of the X on the other, so... Plenty for Wednesday to watch out for, and it'll be interesting because it'll be three forwards against three centre halves. What about Wednesday? How are they going to line up? Well, we've got a really busy schedule of games coming up in this next couple of weeks before end of month. There's one or two players I think he'd probably like to rest. Luongo, been out all last season, struggled this season with injury early on, he's only just come back. And it's when you've just come back that you can pick up them little strains. So I think he'd like to rest him if he could. But in set midfield, who have we got available? We've got the three that are starting. Then you've got Waldock, who's a young lad. And Stanley had a big physical outfit. There's the option you could put Patterson into midfield. And there is an argument that it's his best position. He's certainly not a striker. If you do that, who plays up front? Well, for me, Canberra. I mean, his goal scoring record isn't actually that bad. In fact, I think it's something like one in three, which we haven't got anybody else in the squad who's getting anywhere near them numbers. Certainly not anyone who's available or fit anyway. So for me, it's an old brainer. Canberra up front. Who with? So, Mendes Lang. Mendes Lang might need a rest. He got a bit of a, a strain down his calf and hamstring on uh, Sunday. Hunt's been playing well on the right side anyway, so I think he'll retain his spot. Canberra and So. Maybe it's even time for better, you know, to step out of the wilderness and say, hey, do you know what? I've still got a bit of ability. I'm 28. I can make a go of this. Maybe it's that time. I think Darren Moore would like to make two or three changes, but you don't want to lose that momentum. And while we've been picking this consistent team, we have been getting results. We, if we've had so few players to pick, you haven't really been able to, to tinker too much. And in your benefit... From that continuity of selection so tough game for wednesday also got to think about that pitch that pitch has had a lot of hammer very heavy on sunday and these were big physical team i mean it's, we've had three home games there's been the youth cup final there it's took a lot of hammer we've had a lot of bad weather a lot of bad rain um, so it's going to be a tough game but i do fancy wednesday i've looked at them four matches i, I fancy wednesday to get nine points minimum In fact, really, I think we'll get 12. But we've got to be at it. From from first minute, we've got to work as hard as we have been doing at the back to keep them clean sheets, take them chances up top, and just be that little bit more switched on at set pieces. But I'm confident it'll be a Wednesday win. Yeah, and I do. I think we can take 9 or 12 points out of these next four games.